Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Day Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. And thank the Lord, it's more wrestling stuff. That's right, Jess. This week we're looking at Figures Toy Company wrestling figures. Hey. No, no, no. Wait for it. Wrestling figures. I think we're in the clear. I don't trust it, Jess. Well, I don't hear anybody else. I guess you're right. Well, anyway, Figures Toy Company... I should have known you was going to try to weasel your way into doing a wrestling episode without me! Who in the Sam Hill is Figures Toy Company anyway? Why don't you do something by LJN or Jack Pacific? Because everybody in their mark-ass mother already reviewed all that stuff and Figures Toy Company doesn't get enough attention. Yeah, and at least it's not me goal. Oh, well, might as well be. Hey, didn't I kick you in the dick last year? Well, uh, I don't remember that. Oh, yeah? Well, Ras Holly, roll the flashback! Two years ago on the Dan Classic Show, Dan Classic challenged Ulysses S. America to a contest of strength and fortitude, hoping to eliminate him from the show once and for all. Through extensive training watching the Karate Kid movies, Dan Classic was confident his victory was nigh. When the contest occurred a year later, Ulysses initially proved to be the stronger competitor with a barrage of furious fisticuffs. Oh my, what a wallop! Only through a rousing speech from his stalwart companion could Dan Classic find the fortitude to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Eliminating Ulysses from the Dan Classic show once and for all, until now. Well, do you remember now, jackass? Well, uh, uh, I just get the hell out of here before I throw you another beating. I've been watching the kickboxer movie. The new ones or the old ones? Well, the old ones, but you know, the new ones are kind of cool, right? Yeah, Batista's Tom Poe is great. Hell yeah, that is pretty cool. Wait a minute, I'm kicking you out of here. Go on. Oh, fine then. I'm the lousy comic. Get! Anyway. This week we get back in the ring with Figures Toy Company! Raz Holly, get the music! gone over Figures Toy Company before, but what kind of flies under the radar is that for over 20 years, Figures Toy Company has been making their own line of wrestling figures. That's right, way back in 1998 when Jack's Pacific, Toy Biz, and original San Francisco toy makers were cranking out WWF, WCW, and ECW figures, Figures Toy Company were making wrestling figures too and still are to this day. Starting in the late 90s with their Legends of Pro Wrestling series, figures produced 6-inch figures with some articulation that were a cross between what Hasbro had produced earlier in the decade and what Jax was doing at the present time. The sculpts were hit and miss, but the line included some wrestlers who hadn't had a figure in a few years and some that never had one at all. Also, there was a variant bloody version for each figure. As the wrestling boom died down and the big three companies became one, Figures Toy Company continued along developing more modern style figures that go about 8 inches tall. They seem like a cross between Mego and what Jack Pacific was producing around the same time. And they continue to produce figures for wrestlers not under contract with what has recently become the big three companies again. Anyway, I have a few examples here, so let's check them out. All right, so here it is, Legends of Professional Wrestling by Figures Toy Company, I believe Series 21, because in this series of figures, 
each series uh, consists of one wrestler, two versions, and I'll, and I'll show you here because they have all the versions up to the point where they, they made this one a little bit beyond that on the box here. Starting with King Kong Bundy, going to Abdullah the Butcher, Killer Kowalski, Ivan Putski, Tony Atlas, the Iron Sheik, Bruno San Martino, Nikolai Volkov, Greg Valentine, Kamala, Tito Santana, Bob Orton Jr., young Bruno San Martino, Captain Lou Albano, Ox Baker, Superstar Billy Graham, Chief J Strongbow, Ivan Koloff, Baron Von Rashka, Wahoo McDaniel, Ricky Steamboat, Eddie Gilbert, The Sheik, Jimmy Valiant, and a little old referee. Um, series 14 through 21, Legends feature a pop-off interchangeable head compatible with Figures Toy Company Mystery Wrestler. So, I guess there was a Mystery Wrestler too. Don't know what series that was. 2001 Figures Toy Company, uh, back when the company was uh, headquartered in Rhode Island. Johnston, no, not Cranston. Johnston, Rhode Island. <laughs> so it looks like they moved around a little bit. Um, kind of cool um, looking. I don't know why they use this sort of scary typeface, this scary font on the uh, <laughs> on the box. Um, but one of the cool things about these figures is that uh, it has a regular version and a bloody version. And uh, ours is Ricky Steamboat bloody. Um, so let's take a look and see what Ricky Steamboat looks like outside of the box. Now he comes in a little plastic bag. That's pretty cool. You can see that I've never opened him up. Um, this was actually given to me by a guy who is a scalper. Um, who uh, was the same guy that uh, asked me uh, what my budget was on buying a POC figure, a $20 figure. Anyway, um, <laughs> never mind all that. Let's take a look here. He's in his little plastic bag. We're going to open him up. ASMR. There you go. And there he is. It's bloody Ricky Steamboat. Um, more of a spattering splattering on these very cool looking sculpt here this is actually my first time seeing them out of the bag um wow these are really really cool figures um these figures toy company um legends of wrestling legends of pro wrestling figures um pretty cool the splattering is kind of corny honestly when you look at that um but kind of cool they they thought to offer a variant for each single figure he, and the other uh, other one the uh, the other version that's not bloody has the has the white pants so you do get a different uh, a different outfit with each one of them some of them do come with little accessories and stuff this one just comes by himself in that little box um but very cool looking he looks like he's got the uh, uh five or six points of articulation yeah not too fucking shabby and uh like i said before you can pop off the heads and uh, swap them out with other guys if you wanted to. And, uh, and there he is. So, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat by Figures Toy Company. This was the old line that they uh, that they originally made. Um, just a little bit bigger than the Hasbros, but kind of in the same style. Maybe around the same size of the early Jack Pacific, but these are made out of hard plastic. Um, so, pretty, pretty fucking cool. Right, and here we have from 2003 Andre the Giant and Andre the Giant. Uh, this was the next level of the uh, the legends of professional wrestling by Figures Toy Company. This is when they were transitioning into more of a mix between Mego style and the Jack Pacific style. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, 1970s Andre. He's got his uh, yellow trunks, his uh, giant afro. Um, these boxes are really cheap and they crack and fall apart. So um, there's all sorts of dust and stuff inside the box. It looks like somebody, whoever I bought this off of, tried to repair it with a little scotch tape. Um, so who knows? This might have been pulled out at some point and looked at. Um, I'm not sure what the quality is going to be like. I do believe these might have been made in India. So that does not bode well. Um, for the build on these so hopefully they don't fall apart in my hands as we turn the box around We see we have a giant wall of text here basically a biography on Andre the giant 
Um, anything that you could go look up online, nothing too groundbreaking here. Pretty cool stuff. Talks about his early days as, as Jean Fierre in Canada for Grand Prix Wrestling um, and his uh, discovery by Vince McMahon Sr., um, and uh, began his uh, WWE or WWF career as Andre the Giant. Um, talks a little bit about his uh, his big uh, big Hollywood break as Fezzik in The Princess Bride, and then uh, his final appearance on uh, Super Brawl on um, the 20 year anniversary, the 20 year celebration of NWA slash WCW on uh, TBS uh, back in. Uh, 1993, I want to say. Um, yeah, and then he, no, it was 92. I want to say 92. Yeah, because then he died in 93 in January. So, so there he is. It's Andre the Giants from the 70s, and then um, as we what people might be a little bit more familiar with is Andre the Giant from the 80s in his uh, one strap black singlet. Um, that you may be familiar with, obviously, if you're a fan of the WWF um, or the WWF Wrestling Superstars. The one in this album is actually really expensive. Um, this one um, is actually pretty expensive, too, uh, if you find them on the card. But I'm going to open them up because that's what I do on this show. Same thing on the back as we turn it around. we got the same uh, wall of text here talking about the career of Honor the Giant. And then uh, we have a little uh, ad for the, for the figures on there. And you know what I really like? I was looking at that Ricky Steamboat figure. I might have to get the rest of these things. They're pretty badass, honestly. They're really cool looking sculpts. They've got a lot of personality. Um, but I, what I'm wanting to see is what these Art of the Giant figures look like outside of the box. All right, so let's check out uh, 1970s and early 80s Andre the Giant. Um, with the big afro and the, the yellow trunks and yellow boots. He's just standing there in his underwear. Um, and uh, as you can tell, uh, maybe this is a, uh, a symptom of, of time passing and the, the uh, materials degrading, but the chest piece, the torso piece, is a different color than the arms, legs, and even the head of the figure. Um, he's got the uh, sort of Mego style articulation um, but it looks like he's on some sort of, it's like a T-crotch ball joints, like it's you know what dude this is a much better articulation than um, what the, the Migos have um, I, I feel like we could have done this, maybe give him some ball joints on the hips and this would be an actually a good build for a figure um, but yeah, that's 1970s Andre. Really not much more to say about him. He's a fucking great looking figure. I'm glad he's in my collection. And next up is here we are. It is 1980s Andre with the black one strap singlet that's actually made out of, uh, as, as a, a friend of mine would say, soft goods. Um, it's, you know, real fabric, real fabric clothes. Um, and it's stretchy and he's got little black trunks on underneath it so he's not completely naked so we don't have to look at a giant penis um, but yeah it's got the big hands um, the great pose posability the sculpt is actually pretty nice um, man what a great looking figure um, I mean you'd think that if we went just a little bit further on into the future, uh, the guys that would make figures like this, Amigo style Andre the Giant, man, how much better would it be, say, in fucking, uh, I don't know, 14, 15 years later? And look who's here! Look who's come to join the party. It's Mego 2018 Andre the Giant. Um, I saved this figure for one reason and one reason only, which is to make this comparison. Wow. Wow. Look at these two figures standing next to each other. One actually looks like a giant. The other one is some sort of monstrosity, which is why I have this figure posed with all my monster figures, um, because he's just an ugly piece of shit 
a waste of fucking time. Um, and all the you know the booger eating wrestling fans, of course, are going to snap them up like, oh, I'm such a great fan of on the great, the great late. Andre the Giant that I had to go buy this Mego figure. Fuck you guys. This is a shitty looking figure. Fucking look at this. Fucking Figures Toy Company 14 years prior. 15 years prior. 2003. Andre the Giant. Fucking what an awesome figure. Both of these figures are really great sculpts. Man, they had it figured out way back in the day. Little old figures toy company, even back in their, you know, their starting out stages when they were sending shit out to India to be made. And these aren't too bad. These aren't too bad. You can fucking smash them on the desk and they don't break. These are nice figures and I'm glad I have them in my collection. Okay, and finally, we have our, uh, our last figure today. A uh, more of an example of the modern Figures Toy Company wrestling figures of what you can find on their uh, WrestlingSuperstore.com, FiguresToyCompany.com, ClassicTVToys.com, whatever, whatever website you go to, all roads lead to the same figures um, for the same prices. This is a two-pack featuring, who else? The Young Bucks. Um, says on the poster here, live from the arena, all seats reserved. Collect them all, motherfucker, one night only. And uh, there they are, Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks in their in their money pants. Um, this is actually pretty cool, uh, based on a real uh, gear. They've got the tassels on the on the jackets. Uh, can't wait to see what the backs of these jackets are. I have not opened this up yet, as you can tell. Uh, the Figures Toy Company uh, tagger right there, still on the top says rising stars of wrestling across the top of the box here let's turn it around before we open her up um and we see the collect of all uh rising stars of professional wrestling this is actually from a few years ago um does it say doesn't actually actually say um but it's probably from somewhere along the lines of 2016 um maybe yeah maybe 2016 2017 around abouts because we got Matt and Nick Jackson, Doc Gallows, Brian Myers, AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, Joey Ryan, Cliff Compton, Tama Tonga, Chris Hero, Amber Gallows, Bull James, Colt Cabana, Brian Cage, Sammy Callahan, Sanjay Dutt, Chuck Taylor, Ivelisse, Trent, Rocky Romero, Trevor Lee, and Homicide. Almost all these guys that, that I just listed, with the exception of a couple, are uh, are either uh, <laughs> are either in AEW or uh, the WWE currently. Um, also got an ad for their Legends of Wrestling line. Um, you got uh, New Jack, Jim Cornette, The Blue Meanie, and uh, Justin Credible, I believe. Um, also, a little ad for WrestlingSuperstore.com. You got rings, you got, you got uh, chairs, you got broken shit, belts. All that good stuff to go along with these wrestlers. Um, I cannot wait any longer. So let's uh, break the seal. The Figures Toy Company seal on the little tag on the top of the box. And uh, see what the Young Bucks look like outside of the box. Okay, so here are Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks. Um, these are, let's be honest, these aren't the best looking figures in the world. <laughs> they are kind of cool in a way. We do have um, a real, um, you know, real cloth jackets, tassels, tassels on the boots, uh, the print on the on the pants, on the tights is actually kind of cool. Based on their real gear, the the money print gear. Um, let's let's take a look at at uh, Nick first. He actually looks a little bit better. Um, Nick's uh, face looks a lot like him. It's a good character uh, of you know of a real guy. You know when you're making Batman and you're making uh, you know the the Green Lantern and shit. It's real easy just to sit there and make an approximation or a real cartoony looking face. Uh, but when you got to sculpt the face of a real life person. It's a little bit more difficult, and I think they did a pretty good job on him. Um, and, you know, here's here's one of the main problems with these figures: staining, staining on the arms. So this is never going to go anywhere. Now it was theorized by our good friend, friend of the show, Count Stankus, that the staining is caused by putting the figure away, putting the clothes on them when the figure is still curing or still wet. 
um, and we have this problem on both of these figures. Also, um, the posability. Now, I'm not going to give them a fucking, you know, I'm not going to really go to take them to task on these things with the posability because these have the same goddamn posability that the basic WWE figures have right now and that the, uh, the, the Jack Specific figures had forever um, for a long time. So you really can't blame them there. Um, they have nice little uh, pleather belts on their pants. Kind of cool. Um, you know, the, the sculpts are... Oh my god, look at Matt. Look at Matt's face. That does not look like... And there their fucking goddamn bandanas fall off. Um, and they can't do the, uh, the, the Young Bucks pose because their hips don't... They don't have a, a, a waist thing that makes them... I mean, I guess you can do like this. Look, now they're doing the pose. Um, but... You can't get to keep their their stupid fucking headbands on um, without you know falling off. Um, they're okay. They come with little folding chairs, which is more than you can say for the Mego. Hey, look, they're actually in scale with the figures. Um, two folding chairs. So I guess they came with a folding chair each if you bought these guys separately. Um, you know what? I don't think they'll be making these for much longer now that uh, the AEW has got the Young Bucks. And, uh, you know, they're, they're probably just selling out the rest of what they have. And look, and look at the detail, though. They, Nick Jackson, Matt Jackson, they made individual jackets. They didn't need to. They could have just made one jacket that said Young Bucks on it and, uh, and called it a day. But they, you know, they thought enough to make separate gear um, for both of these figures. Got real zippers on them. Um, they're nice. They're nice figures for what they are. And honestly, if you're one of those people that keeps shit in the box, they look okay in the box. Um, and, uh, you know, they come in that figure's toy company, resealable clamshell. Um, and for, you know, what they are, they're not the worst thing in the world. But yeah, they could absolutely be better. All right, and finally, um, just as a special treat, just wanted to show you a custom figures toy company wrestling figure that I made myself um, with stuff from where else? Classic TV Toys, figuresToyCompany.com. You can go to Classic TV Toys, um, which is part of Figures Toy Company. You can go and you can purchase all these peaches. I bought this body. I bought this head. I painted it. I gave them the Ultimate Warrior face paint. I used a little uh, a little tape to make uh, the wristbands. Used some nylon cord to make his uh, his little fucking tassel -y gimmicks. Um, you know, uh, other little gimmicks. This ribbon here. The, you got, I got the trunks at figurestoycompany.com. These were socks that I just cut down to make knee pads. Cut out a little uh, electrical tape, made a little Ultimate Warrior logo. And the boots, also classictvtoys.com. Paint a little Ultimate Warrior logo on those. And there you go. I used the shitty uh, fake <laughs> winged eagle belt that came with the Art of the Giant Mego figure. And there you have it. It is the Ultimate Warrior Mego style, one of a kind, uh, by yours truly, Dan Classic. And a special bonus on our, because uh, he's technically a figures toy company wrestling figure um, even though he is a custom made by me so at the end of the day um, even if the ones that they're making nowadays aren't of the best quality you can take it upon yourself to make your own um, legends of professional wrestling out of uh, the pieces that you can buy right there on classictvtoys.com and, uh, and I for one I am glad even though they do lack a little bit in the quality department and even though, you know, they are kind of overpriced for what they are, um, the, these figures, toy company, wrestling figures, I'm glad they exist um, because, you know, more wrestling toys, fucking, what could be better? Well, that's figures, toy company, wrestling figures. Do you have any of these? Do you even know they existed? Let us know in the comments below. And keep the wrestling figures coming. With all the major wrestling companies producing figures, I'm sure we won't run out of wrestling stuff to talk about anytime soon. Hot damn! And don't forget, if you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell! What happens if you ring the bell? Well, nobody knows. It's just something that YouTubers say. Well, perhaps somebody should ring the bell and find out. Let's hope that they do. Anyway, that's all for now, and we'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show. Raz Holly, hit the music!